We all ready? Okay, do you want to start off with a question? or Can do you, you start off with your first and last name? Your sure. Title as you want to appear. Okay, sure. Uh, I'm Alex Lamishko, and I'm with the National Transportation Safety Board. Alex, can you spell Lamishko? L-E-M-I-S-H-K-O. Okay. Where does the investigation stand right now? The NTSB just arrived at the scene probably about an hour and a half ago. We were notified by the uh, Arvada Police Department. Uh, fortunately, we had an investigator in the area myself, and I drove to the scene. I only live two hours away. So we are in the preliminary stages of the investigation. We're on scene collecting perishable information at this time. Uh, we do know that this was a Beach 35 aircraft, 1969 model. It had six seats in it. The uh, flight originated from the Centennial Airport about 9.36 this morning and presumably was en route to the Rocky Mountain Airport for unknown reasons. There were four people on board. All four were transported to the hospital with critical to serious injuries. Unfortunately, I can't give you the names of the pilot and the occupants at this point. Alex, there's some ATC audio out there. I don't know if you've been able to, to hear any of that, where the pilot is describing a oil light that's on, uh, sure. losing power quickly. Can, can you kind of walk us through what he's talking about and how what his experience sure. is affecting his ability it, to fly? It's not, it's not unusual for a pilot to, uh, if they're having problems while they're flying, to transmit that problem as best they could to whoever they're speaking to on the radio. Uh, it's my understanding, and I personally have not read the transcript yet. Uh, my priorities are with the accident scene here right now. But it's from my understanding that uh, there was a report from the pilot that he was having some sort of engine issues and that he was going to try to make Rocky Mountain Airport as you can see, he didn't make Rocky Mountain Airport, and from the lay of what we're seeing here, it looks like the pilot attempted to land on a roadway that's next to these houses. Can you talk about the uh, debris field or anything that you're analyzing? Sure, on the street? sure. Yeah, uh, we uh, at, at first glance we can see that there's a. You can see that spruce tree off to to your left. That's where the uh, left wing hit first, that tall spruce tree. And then the aircraft uh, did land on the roadway and skidded down the roadway and, and wound up in the backyard. Uh, apparently uh, quite a bit of fuel was on board, so there was a post-crash fire. And thank goodness for the lo local response of the uh, Arvada pl uh, Fire Department to be able to handle that fire and get those people you know, out safe. The last report that I got that all four passengers were being cared for in either serious or critical condition, and that's all I know. And I can't break out who's uh, who's in critical and who's in serious, but I know that there were some uh, treatments for burns and that sort of thing. And four people were inside of the airplane? Yes, sir. Do we know their relationship to each other? That I'm going to have to pass to the police department. I don't know what their relationship was at this point. Was anybody ejected from the airplane? Not that I know of. Can you talk about the plane itself, what it was, and what it's capable of? Sure. It's a Beechcraft uh, V-35. Uh, it's powered by a, a Continental 520 engine. It's a very popular aircraft with gen in general aviation. It's a 1969 model. And uh, uh, they, of course, originally were built in Wichita, Kansas, where Beechcraft has its factory. How far are we from, or how far is the crash scene from Rocky Mountain? Good question. I, I wouldn't speculate more than like 15, 20 miles. Okay. 
maybe. And again, that's where he was ultimately nearby. Okay. I would I would imagine if you're at altitude, you probably could see it from here. Okay. We heard the plane originated from Centennial, though. Do you know? About 9:36. It left Centennial Airport. Yes, sir. Do this you know morning. where they were destined to? Uh, uh, apparently, they were destined to Rocky Mountain. Can you talk about um, sights and sounds that you've heard from witnesses that you or your colleagues have spoken to today? We haven't spoken to any witnesses yet. We, we, uh, we're concentrating on documenting the accident scene as it, as it sits uh, to gain any of the perishable information that before the aircraft is transported to a secure facility for further evaluation. Can you talk about the survivability of a post-crash fire? Just how that affects people's outcomes? As you can see, this had a severe post-crash fire. And like I said, the response of the local fire department was key in, in, in getting these occupants to safety. We know that every one of these crashes are, is, is different. Have you seen anything that's unique about this one yet in your preliminary sort of investigation? I haven't seen anything unique. I haven't been here long enough to uncover anything, really. I can leave that to the to the sheriff here. He can answer that question. sure if they were the same family or not. an airport if an experienced pilot can't make an airport they will look for the most suitable place to land the aircraft a roadway is not a bad place to land an aircraft it really isn't a railroad track is a, a, a long you know a longitudinal area is not a place to land it so I'm sure what was going through the pilot's mind was I see a roadway I need to get this aircraft down let's give it a shot Sure. I, I, I plan on being here at least for the rest of the day, maybe a little bit tomorrow. Uh, but uh, fortunately, we have a, a secure facility in Greeley, Colorado, and we're going to transport that in the aircraft and all its components to Greeley for further examinations. I don't. All I know is they're nice people and they weren't hurt. Stayed on the roadway, 